What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we got Robin and Layla of Venues. Thank you so much for being here today. It's great to be able to talk with you. Hey, Alex. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, anytime, anytime. So the first two singles that I heard off of the new album, Soulless, is absolutely awesome. I really want to know, like, first off, could these first two singles, Rite of Passage and Shifting Colors, uh, serve as maybe a good representation of the, what the whole album is like? Or is that just the first taste of it and there's a lot more to be heard? Uh, well, yeah, good question <clears throat> right at the start. Um... I would say there's definitely more to come because um, the next singles that we will release are, yeah, I would say a little bit more uh, rocky, poppy, a little bit more post-hardcore, and I would say maybe less metal. Or what do you think, Lila? Could we say it like this? Ah, depends on the song. We have a bunch of variety in the whole album, so yeah, hard to say. But yeah, I would. I think we would rather say that it's a, a first taste of what will come, and not really, uh, yeah, like the ultimate representation here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, um, Layla, this is your first album with the band. So when you joined with Venues, were you looking at the Aspire album, being like, okay, this is how I have to sing, or were you kind of allowed to bring a little bit more of your own mix into Venues at first? Ah, uh, I was totally allowed to bring my own mix uh, in there, um, what I was re very happy about. <laughs> but though I listened, of course, I listened to Aspire, and to keep it in the you know the venues kind of way of writing songs and of the sound. But I, though I try to to bring in my own, since I, my voice is pretty different from Knife's voice, so it has to be a bit something different than Aspire, but. We try to keep it in the same place. Mm -hmm. Robin, for you, did it feel like you were picking off uh, where you left off after Aspire or with bringing in a new vocalist, you were kind of allowed to expand your sound a little bit and maybe step into new territory? Um, yeah, I think we would have written something like Solace anyway, even if we wouldn't have changed our uh, new clean singer. Um, so yeah, I think for all of us, it felt pretty natural to write this kind of a record now. And um, yeah, Leila just fit in perfectly for this whole plan that we were aiming for. So yeah, I think, but I mean, yeah, of course we had some, some freedom to do whatever we wanted to do. So the timing was right to, to just write it as it sounds now. That's the best way to describe the Solus album. I felt like it felt very free. It felt like that there was no limits and there was a lot of different uh, sounds and a lot of different emotions. Is it Was there at all maybe like a preconceived idea of what you all wanted this album to sound like? Or was there a lot of experimentation and a lot of uh, trial and error? Uh, I think it was more of an experimentation since... Um... We also had our new guitarist, who is also involved in the songwriting, of course. And it was like we had to find ourselves in writing songs together, since it was the first music we ever did in that constellation. So it was a trial and error, but it uh, it worked. <laughs> I think in general, we we all had the idea that we want to sound a little bit heavier than on the previous one, which was, I mean, yeah, Aspire was pretty poppy and um, yeah, we wanted to be a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more heavy. Yeah, and I, th I think because of that, you have like, I think you could appeal to multiple uh, music fans as well. Like I know people who will love Kill Switch Engage who could appreciate this album. I think people who love uh, Dance Gavin Dance could appreciate this album. I think that there's like so many different sounds and the, really the sky is the limit. Yeah, thank you. We hope that this it will be exactly like this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right now we had a lot of also a lot of comments from from guys who usually listen to Amaranth or some female fronted epic metal stuff, but also from the core scene, you know. So seems like so far it worked out. <laughs> yeah. You could you could go way beyond the boundaries. You could tour with Behemoth and you could tour with Paramore. I think it'll work great for both. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. That sounds good. 
would love to do this. <laughs> now, I know I'm probably asking this way too far in advance, being that Solace isn't even out yet, but do you think that this album maybe opened up more doors for venues in the future now that, you know, you have kind of like a new lineup and you're able to kind of, and you obviously there was a lot of discovery on this. Do you think that more doors opened up for venues in the future? Uh, yeah, I think... I mean, yeah, in a, an honest way, I, I really think that it it will be like this, that this album will open new doors for us, especially as we are maybe, yeah, get out of this like rocky post-hardcore corner and become a little bit more metal also. We already received a lot of um, invitations to play on like more old school metal festivals and stuff like this, which is cool. But also, yeah, we're trying to stay like in this modern, core world if you know what i mean so right now it's, i would say that it's yeah it definitely is opening a few doors maybe leila you can add something here no i'm totally with you so all right we have to hope that it will be okay with the pandemic <laughs> when the album comes out but yeah looks good so far yeah don't forget your core roots the 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 metal core kids will always uh come after you <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, I think if you check out our, like, the music videos and how we look and how we perform live, you can see that we are all coming from these, yeah, core world. <laughs> well, was that all of your inspirations, like, when, when starting venues, like, or, like, even for how you perform and how you play, like, or do you have, like, uh, inspirations that people never would have guessed? Uh, yeah, this is always a tricky question for us because every one of us um, has very different influences. Um, I mean, personally, I do come from all this post-hardcore, emo-core scene back in 2005, 2006, and I grew up with all this Bless the Fall and Escape the Fate, all that stuff, you know? <laughs> that was my stuff and in high school. Yeah, so I think I... I automatically I'm bringing in a lot of this post-hardcore metalcore vibe but um, our main songwriter Constantine he's like more into these classic old school metal stuff from the 80s and stuff like this which you maybe can hear on a few guitar riffs here and there and yeah I think our drummer is a big fan of bands like Breaking Benjamin and rock bands like this so I think it's a very colorful mix of all these different styles. And if someone listens to venues, I'm pretty sure these guys won't get what, what lies behind of this sound because it's so a uh, crazy mix of all these different genres and favorite bands of us. Yeah. And uh, for Layla, your voice, I feel like is very versatile as well. Like, I feel like you express many different emotions and many different techniques behind it. So do you have like a versatile uh, vocal uh, influence as well? Um, it's hard to say, yeah. I had this uh, vocal influence from from when I, when I was a child. I love Janis Joplin <laughs> and Steven Tyler. I always wanted to sing like the very raspy and rocky, but when I joined venues, uh, I started singing higher and higher. So in, in, a, in, a, in a range where I didn't sing before, ever. So I had to learn this new style of singing and get those high pitches. So it's hard to say I don't really have a vocal technique now. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah, I practice every day. So it gets better and better, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah. But now I don't have don't really have vocal influences at the moment. I'm just trying out what I can do with my voice and yeah, the band opened some new doors for me in the in the vocal world. Yeah, so I'm growing. Mm -hmm. A lot to learn. With every band with every band you join and every song you write, you you'll discover things that you never knew about yourself. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Now, in addition to singing and having vocals, you know, there's also lyrics that are incorporated in there. Um, has, has there ever been a time where maybe lyrics could influence the outcome of the song or maybe like a concept? Or has there always needed to be music before any lyrical ideas came into play? Well, it depends on the song, I would say. But there were songs where we discussed the story behind the song before we wrote the lyrics. Um, 
And so the whole song was built around this story we wanted to tell with the song. Uh, but there are also other songs where I, well, I write the lyrics that I sing and Robin uh, adds his screaming lyrics. So we're working together in writing those lyrics for every song. And uh, sometimes there was a song that I started to write and it was about a, a thing that I had in my mind and a story I wanted to tell. And Robin took this and put on his side of the story, so to say. Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah, can, yeah. yeah. When it comes to being that you both uh, bring the vocals, like to me, the sound of venues right now is the combination of you two singing and harmonizing together. Um, so when it comes to either recording the vocals or even writing the lyrics, do you both kind of need to be in the same sort of uh, headspace or be in the same mind frame in order to like have the songs be consistent in a way? Or is it easy for one person to track their vocals and then another person to track it later or something? Um, yeah, I mean, usually, um, whoever comes up with the idea first will contact the other one. And um, then we're talking a little bit about the topic and what what are the ideas behind all the sentences. And maybe, yeah, if Lila already has written the chorus with the lyrics, and then I'm asking her what were her thoughts and her mood and her feelings behind all that stuff. And usually I'm, I always can, uh, yeah, put myself into this feeling and yeah, emphasize with her and maybe transparent it on a, on a situation in my life where I went through. So this is usually how we do this. So on this album, we, we never had a situation where we were like, whoa, I don't, can't do anything with this situation. So we, I would say we harmonize pretty well on this one. Definitely. And yeah. Definitely. And do you like so the lyrics? Because you mentioned that there are some songs that have stories in them and whatnot. Do you try to leave the lyrics open to interpretation or do you try to engage the listener into what the song could also be about? Um, this also depends on the song, but I would say most of our songs are written with uh, very much space for interpretation. So that the listener can take what he needs from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I feel like, you know, when you listen to the entirety of the album, like uh, when I was listening to the full length album to go from like razor blade teeth to into the fire to like our destiny ending with mountains, it almost seemed like I was able to kind of explore. I got different images and different emotions and different vibes. Is it fair to say that each song is maybe reminiscent of what you each were feeling at that particular time? I know it's kind of a cliche question, but. Um, yeah, I mean, all in all, Solace is, uh, is also a record which was, or I mean, if I compare it with Aspire, Solace is way more personal um, to me and I think to all of the band members because this time we really put a lot of personal stuff in it and writing about topics that we, we went through or especially in these pandemic times where a lot of us were struggling with hard times, like playing no shows. Um, a few of us are working in the music industry, so they are going through a hard time right now. And um, yeah, so we just wanted to be honest with this one. And we also named the, the whole record after it because um, Solace is in the end also a personal Solace for all of us because it was kind of the end on the light in the tunnel. And um, yeah, we were all looking forward to to write and to produce it and to shoot the music videos for it because all of this were like, yeah, like um, bright points in our current lives where we just sitting around and waiting for the pandemic to end and to start playing live again. Yeah. And I can't wait. And when shows do happen again, it, please, can you bring venues to the States, please? Oh, oh yeah, man. That would be a dream come true, yeah. hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the name venues in itself, because so many venues were 
closing as a result of this pandemic that like that would be the perfect band name to like I've always said that there's going to be a lot of band names there's already a black metal band starting that I think they're called Pfizer and uh, there's like uh, so like I think Venues is like the perfect band name to pay homage to the struggles of the music industry that has been happening mm. yeah totally yeah but yeah fingers crossed that we can can come to the states yeah you're always future. Welcome. you're always welcome in new york city nice yeah. all right <laughs> and uh, i have a couple more questions for you when it comes to playing live is there maybe a similar energy that you both channel into your live presence as you do when you're songwriting or do you consider songwriting and playing live two completely separate arts oh i would say for me personally it's uh two completely different things because when I'm writing songs, I'm all by myself and I, it's, it's a different way of expressing myself when no one watches me. <laughs> While being on stage is um, more for me, also for me, of course, but also for the fans to be there in the, in the very moment and to give my best on stage, it's a total different feeling. Even if the songs are the same and you take those emotions you had while songwriting with you on stage, of course, but you express them on, on a, in a different way for the crowd to feel it and see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I agree with Leila totally. But uh, when it comes to the energy, I would say that uh, life, there's, especially for me, uh, yeah, like the whole show, I mean, I started playing in the band only to play live. So this is uh, my highest goal with this band, just to play as much as possible. Because yeah, it's just loving the energy when it comes to playing live and sharing the energy with the crowd and getting it back. This is just a yeah, magical feeling and mm -hmm. yeah, I love it. It's a little bit different than writing songs because you have to be more like, yeah, being Focus. being honest and being concentrated being focused writing a song and if you go on the stage it's just like all right let's let's tear it down <laughs> yeah I, exactly it's but let me ask you do you do you have to practice crowd interaction and stage presence as much as you practice the material or does like the idea of stage presence and crowd interaction just come as you play more live i, I actually asked a, a band the other day like do you have to like set up dolls and pretend like you're interacting with the crowd or something like that uh well yeah this is actually something that we we really had on our to-do list because during 2019 um we were like pretty spontaneous on all of the shows and festivals and yeah just talk to them whatever came up to our minds and um but yeah, we on our to-do list is that we want to have a little bit more structure here and um, yeah, just be a little bit more, don't be so chaotic and messed up and um, having a little bit of kind of a script, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And uh, another question I have is, as well as in order to get that songwriting inspiration, do ideas, whether it is for lyrics or vocal melodies, do they come out of nowhere sometimes or do you have do you each have to like be in your own sort of like mindset or like be in your own little element in order for the creative ideas to come through oh for me they um most of the time come out of nowhere well not really when, when we when it comes to writing songs i uh, keep them songs playing on repeat before i write those um, melodies and lyrics and I listen to them yeah, a whole day, a whole week. And yes, at some time it, it pops just in my mind and I have this idea. So yeah. I have to say if this is out of nowhere somehow, but not really. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine inspiration strikes at some of the most inconvenient times. <laughs> yeah, and I would say for me, it's yeah, more or less the same, I'm just, because usually we, we do songwriting like this, that the whole song is already finished on the in instrumental side. And after that, we start um, putting on the vocals. So this is a very, uh, yeah, easy situation for us, I would say, because we can just play around with a finished song and try out this, try out that, and just keep repeating the track until we, we think that we found something pretty cool. And yeah. 
How do you know when a song is done? I want you both to answer that because this is the most difficult question of the whole interview. <laughs> hmm. Well, I think I know the song is done if we leave the studio and say it's done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If there's nothing, nothing else to do. But yeah, when it comes to songwriting, well, this is, especially for us, this is pretty hard because when we were going into the studio um, last summer, we were more or less finished with all the songs, but we, we really changed a lot of stuff, right? I mean, yeah, on the fly in the studio with our producer and tried out this, tried out that, like small peaks, but yeah, that who changed a lot or which changed a lot in the end of the song. But um, yeah, maybe Leila, what do you think? Mm, I would say the song is, well, not completely finished, but for us, the, the raw song is finished if uh, everybody likes it. If everyone in the band says it's cool like that, then it's uh, the song is ready to go to the studio and get the final final stuff done. Polishment or something like yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, it seems like that the band is very collaborative, that you all have to have a mutual agreement. It's not like one person writes everything. Like, I, And I, that's something I could tell when I listen to your music that Venues is a very collaborative effort and like, I don't feel there there are bands and I'm not going to mention names but there are some bands where I feel ego or I feel that one person runs everything but with venues I really feel like it is all of you in in a band together and that's something that I find so great. Yeah, which is hard sometimes because uh there are a few songs uh, where it took a lot of time until everybody agreed <laughs> but it was worth it. Yeah. Yeah crazy that you that you hear this because uh this is a true point like we are i would say like 100 percent democratic band like everyone we are five guys in it and or well, four guys and one girl and everyone can uh share its opinion and change whatever they want to change and yeah usually we try to work on the songs as long as every or until everyone is happy with it so yeah yeah i i'm able to also hear it because i listen to maybe about, I'm not even exaggerating over a million albums now in my life so you know you're you, you like are able to like listen in and know okay like this is a guitar driven band obviously the guitarist wrote everything on it but mm -hmm. with venues it has to be I, I need those those two vocalists I need that guitar sound I need that rhythm sound so and uh, it worked out great and the final question cool. And the final question I wanted to ask you is, and I totally forgot, so forgive me, but where in Germany is the band uh, currently uh, based from? Uh, we are based in the south of Germany, in Stuttgart. Okay, so is that southwest or southeast? Uh, southwest. Okay, yep. yeah. Bavaria is on the other side where my family's from. Yeah. Uh, right. But, um, like, I know that there are a lot of great bands from Germany, from the history of metal, from Accept to Creator to Sodom to so many bands. But, like, you know, there's a lot of great bands such as Obscura and Dark Fortress and so many other amazing bands that have been coming out of Germany. In your region, is there kind of like a scene that Venues has always been associated with or has the goal for Venues was to just get outside of your state lines more or your out of your hometown more and play to, in front of as many different people as possible. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was always a dream to to get out of Stuttgart and maybe also to get out of Germany and play as much shows as possible, like everywhere. But um, I think if, if we compare our city with, um, with other cities in Germany, when it comes to the scene, to the music scene, I think we have a pretty pretty good situation over here because we still have uh, or had before the pandemic started a lot of local shows and yeah, kind of a, a good audience. We have, I mean, yeah, our, we have the, the most fans, most venues fans are coming from Stuttgart. So if we play a hometown show, we know that it gets crowded, but um, yeah. So I think Stuttgart is not the worst city to start a band and to have the home base in there. Yeah. Or well, Lila, what do you think? <laughs> Uh, I would say it the same, yeah. Yeah, no. yeah I mean, because uh, what's funny is, is like a lot of people in America, I, I've known in, in, in America, European bands are always put on a pedestal, whether it sounds like In Flames or whether it sounds like Meshuggah or whether it sounds 
like 80s hair glam metal like everybody's just always interested um but a lot of people also think that um and i unfortunately made this mistake when i went to europe but like a lot of people think that as soon as they land in europe that they get off the plane and it immediately looks like one giant Ozfest. but uh it seems like uh there is a great underground that thrives in europe i think venues has a lot of that underground charm as well Thanks. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there are so many great, talented young bands that no one ever heard of. And uh, we played a few shows with them all across Germany. And yeah, we shared the stage with a lot of bands where I was thinking, damn, why is nobody knowing about this band? But you know, in modern times, you have to be more than just uh, writing good music. You have to run a business more or less. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. became hard for the smaller bands <laughs> yeah i mean look at infected rain they came from moldova which is in the middle of nowhere and they've been taking off too so it, it's possible it's possible definitely yeah so yeah. so before we go i want to thank you both so much for your time today and for such a great uh morning chat here in america it's 10 a.m here right now uh is there just a uh, Anything else with venues that you would like to promote or anything that you would like to shout out or with new merch, obviously the new album comes out very soon, maybe a live stream performance to hold some eager fans over or something? Uh, yeah, at first we want to thank you too for the invitation, it was a pretty cool interview. And um, yeah, what can we say maybe to all the guys listening to us right now, keep your eyes and ears open. There are more singles to come out soon with crazy music videos go check the videos out they are <laughs> very expensive and very cool <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah what else can i say looking forward to our final album release we will also hopefully do a, a live stream show in june it's not totally safe yet but it seems like it will happen awesome well, thank you all so much. Everybody, we are here with Venues. Be sure to check out Solace coming out this summer of 2021. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.